I call to order a regular meeting of the President and Board of Trustees of Machesney Park, Illinois for Monday, February 2nd, 2015. Please stand for invocation led by Village Clerk Roy Mitchell and Pledge of Allegiance led by Trustee Kate Tamman. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for keeping the village safe during this weekend storm. Thank you for our firefighters, our police, the snowplow operators, and the village public works staff who have spent so many hours away from their families to keep us, the residents, safe from harm. Thank you for this board and the elected officials who work to make McChesney Park a great community. Guide the decisions that are made here and provide us all with wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the clerk take a roll call, please? Mayor Boland. Here. Trustee Snodgrass. Here. Tamman. Here. Kidd. Here. Wilson. Here. Yo. Here. And Trustee Beck is absent. Clerk is present, the attorney is present. Thank you, Lori. We have a quorum. Uh, next, we have approval of minutes uh, from January 20th, 2015. Board meeting, I entertain a motion to approve. So made. Second. I have a motion and a second. Are there any discussions or changes? I see none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes have been approved. Next, we have Treasurer's Report, Steve Johnson. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This week's uh, Treasurer's Report reflects what the village received in MFT funds of $59,175.93 and billed necessity funds of $271,533.06. The total of all funds this evening is $5,992,158.50. Dollars and ninety six cents. That's all, I, that's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I entertain a motion to accept the treasurer's report. Second. I have a motion and a second. Are there any discussions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The treasurer's report has been accepted. Next, we have communications. Village Clerk Lori Mitchell. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the Harlan Roscoe Fire Department for receiving an ISO classification of three. Um, the classifications are designated with 10 being the lowest and one being the best. So what this means for the residents of the Harlem Roscoe district is homeowners insurance companies look at this score because it shows the effectiveness of the fire department. It's exciting news for Chief Shovlin and the Harlem Roscoe Fire Department. Also, I'd like to introduce um, founder of Vets Roll, Mark Finnegan, and his uh, counterpart, Bruce Jacobson, who will give a short presentation on the Vets Roll program. This program enables veterans to travel to Washington, D.C. to visit the war memorials for free. Thank you for having us down. Uh, my name is Mark Finnegan. Uh, my wife Darlene's in the back. She's a shy one. Uh, my brother John and I, we founded the Vets Roll Program in uh, February of 2000. Actually, it was February 2nd, 2010, so it'll be five years today. Um, if you're not familiar with Vets Roll, we kind of uh, almost operate kind of stealthy. Um, it's a program similar to the Honor Flight. Um, Honor Flight is a, a nationwide wonderful program where they fly World War II, uh, originally World War II era veterans out to Washington, D.C. To, to thank them for their contributions to society. And when we started hearing about the, vets, or the Honor Flight program, we got thinking about a way to honor our father who was a World War II veteran. He's a well-known businessman on the <coughs> East side, Finnegan. And he passed away after a seven-year battle of cancer back in January of 2000. 
And we got looking at the honor flight program and where they fly these veterans out to Washington, D.C., but they're out and back the same day. And at that time, you know, these were veterans in their mid-80s. Now you're World War II vets. The youngest World War II vets this year are 87 years old. And that's if they went in them when they were 17. Um, and so being an RV dealer, we got looking at the logistics of doing a similar honor to the veterans of that era, but slowing it down and doing it by ground. And that's kind of where the concept of Vetrol came from. And the first year we did it, um, we conceived, 1st of February, we conceived the program without even having the first veteran, the first dollar, the first anything. And, um, and we, in, by, we set a, a deadline of May 17th, I think it was that first year, to pull this program off. And in 90 days, we raised $90,000 we were able to have 117 World War II vets. We also honor the Rosie the Riveters, the, uh, the ladies of the World War II era, which our own mother is a Rosie the Riveter, still living today. And because if, you're, if you study history in this country, we very likely would not have been victorious in World War II had it not been for the ladies moving into the mostly male dominant workforce at the time and not only did they keep our factories running at 100% plus capacity, they allowed us to deploy millions more troops around the world. We, we literally wore down the enemy. And so for that reason, we, we honor Rosie as a counterpart, equal counterpart. And uh, to me, it's a travesty. There is no memorial to Rosie the Riveter on, on the lawn in Washington, D.C. to this day. And they're the same age as their World War II counterparts, so they're not going to be here much longer. And I'm very happy to to mention that Bruce standing here next to me with the Via Now chapter here in Rockford. Um, I think you were one of the very first groups to, to give us a, a platform to, to get this crazy idea out there about taking these people out to Washington. And now, if you've got that little handout I, I sent around there, the, the little tidbit sheet, Vets Roll has now, we are working on our sixth trip, our 1125th veteran in Rosie the Riveter that we take it's a caravan, I didn't even tell you, it's a four-day caravan, all expenses paid, uh, with 11 charter coaches. And we leave out of Beloit. Um, this year we're actually leaving out of Hananiga High School in Rockton because the Eclipse Center in Beloit is going to be under construction. So all of our, all of our uh, functions will be out of, based out of the PAC there in Hananiga. And uh, the, the caravan will go down Rockton Road and come back in on Rockton Road. And um, we go, the first day we go down to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base down in Dayton, Ohio. And we take them on a, a tour of the National Air Museum. Uh, last year we had uh, World War II fighter ace Freddie Orr from Rockford with us. And Freddie is now 95 years old, flew 155 missions in a P-51 Mustang, had 23 kills. He's a bona fide World War II hero, ace, fighter ace. Um, from there, and then we go on out to Washington D.C. And one of the one of the many really neat things about this trip is, as Bruce has got here, was this your group in that picture? Or we, it, it wasn't. Okay. There's a people will follow it on Facebook. If any of you are on Facebook, we've got about thirty thousand followers on our Facebook page, and they'll know where we're at pretty much any given time in route. And we'll be going down. This could be an interstate out in, in Maryland. And there'll be people up on the bridges, and there'll be, you know, waving flags, they'll be saluting the veterans. Um, sometimes fire departments will be out there. The local fire departments here have helped out on the homecoming. They'll be up on the overpasses on the interstate with flags draped down over the railings. Um, we have uh, state police escorts from Pennsylvania all the way back to Beloit on the, the trip back. And um, especially in Ohio, the state troopers pull into the centers. In the meetings, they stand outside their squad cars and they salute the vets when they roll through. There's parents that will be alongside. They'll have flags waving. They'll have their kids out there. It's, it's a bona fide celebration of patriotism and what's still good about this country. We do an awful lot of partnership with, with Via Now, uh, the Harlem High School Veterans Project, just a wonderful program they have going there. And it's just it's exciting to see how it's evolved. This year, 1125th veteran in Rosie, 
Um, 28 different states we've had veterans come from now. Uh, on this year's trip alone, we have veterans coming from 17 different states to go on this trip. And it, it's just exciting um, to, to see how this has grown. It's been recognized by the governor of Illinois, the governor of Wisconsin, the state legislatures of Illinois and Wisconsin, the state legislature of Maryland. Um, uh, this year, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Jim Bo Jim Bohannon, uh, his national radio talk show host. Uh, when we're in Washington, D.C., we're going to be at the CBS studios there in D.C. and uh, do a live hour segment on the Jim Bohannon show, which is pretty, you know, it's all these little things that keep coming up that, that get it out there. But, you know, it, it, it's just, uh, it's a, our, our taglines are closure, gratitude, and respect. That's the three things that we deliver. It's done at no charge to the veterans whatsoever. Um, the day before the trip, we have five buses that go out around Wisconsin and Illinois, up to Minneapolis, up to Green Bay, one will go down to St. Louis, one down to Indiana, Chicago, Milwaukee, and they pick the vets up and they bring them into Beloit and we put them up the day before the trip and then the day after the trip, they take them back home. Um, I think we serve somewhere like 122,000 meals. It's just, and it's all at no charge because it's, it's just our way of thanking the veterans now. We're getting towards the Vietnam era, but uh, we, uh, you know, that's probably the most common question to get the Vietnam vets. Uh, my four oldest brothers were Vietnam era veterans, and but it's it's a numbers thing. We have to take the World War II vets first. We take 200 veterans and Rosies every year. Our cutoff of March 1st is we take every vet and Rosie 1948 and earlier that signs up. This year, we currently have 104 World War II vets and Rosie the Riveters on the list. It's amazing. We have a 97-year-old Rosie the Riveter from the state of Washington coming, and she still winters in Arizona. <laughs> it's just amazing. So, um, I guess that's it. Uh, if, if you're on <coughs> Facebook, if you want to send me an email, um, I'll send you back uh, a copy of our video. It's an award-winning video of our, our excursion. And the people that did this video are in the process of making a feature-length movie about, about Vets Roll will be released in 2016. So we're really excited and it's based right here in Winnebago County. How cool is that, huh? So, Bruce? I'd like to point out, uh, for, for instance, uh, my father uh, had a bad experience uh, at the end of World War II with an airplane where the pilot was trying to fly it in rather bad conditions. and. My dad said the uh, the wings were flapping enough. He didn't need propellers, and he he lost his interest in flying after that. So I would say that the buses are, are <laughs> essential for him, and uh, and also that the uh, uh, at their own expenses, uh, there are Vietnam veterans that accompany the older fellows to assist them, and so this offers a, an excellent opportunity for a handoff from one generation to the next. And, um, and then he mentioned the, the high school program that's going on here. So we have a, 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 a good opportunity for multi-generational involvement in this and keeping the, the uh, honoring of veterans culture alive in, in this area. We're doing a good job with that. I, I appreciate your interest and in different members in the, in the, the, uh, that are here that have helped us in, in our activities in the past. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. you know, Bruce, just... Uh Stirred my memory here. Uh, we take four Harlem High School seniors from that that Veterans Project. They go on the trip with us. Uh, we have a sponsor that pays their way to go on the trip. So all year long, I'm assuming you're all familiar with that program. It's a fantastic program, and all year long they work with these vets and they document everything, and then they have their May uh, uh, gala at, at the high school there. Well, there's four students that are chosen by the faculty from that class. They get to see the fruits of their labor. They get to see the powerful impact of, of how this trip affects those heroes that they've been studying and reporting on. So it's really cool. Do you have any questions at all? Or? Yes, sir. A question. A lot of the vets are World War II vets are pretty frail and uh, So are there any caregivers? Or because my Great. father's uh, a World War II vet. He's a young one. He's 87. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a great point, and I didn't bring it up. Of our, on our trip, we take the 200 veterans and Rosies. 
we have, a, believe it or not, a waiting list of assistant applications. This is people that are willing to take four days off of work and spend $550 of their own money to go on the trip if they're chosen. We have a waiting list for it. And of that, we take about 130 to 140 people off that list that are chosen from their applications. And in that group, there's about 40 EMTs, LPNs, RNs, physical therapists, oxygen techs. Uh, we supply all the oxygen, the concentrators, the nebulizers. We supply the wheelchairs. We supply the walkers. It's almost like a rolling triage going down the road. One of my favorite quotes, we had a World War II vet. He wrote us a letter. He says, if the folks at Vets Roll would have planned the invasion of Normandy, it would have gone a lot smoother. <laughs> <laughs> so. Any other questions at all? Okay, well, I really appreciate the, the platform and, uh, you know, uh, May 20th, put it on your calendar. It's a homecoming you'll never believe. Aaron, I, I think you've been there. But yeah, yeah. It, it's a homecoming you'll never believe. It, there's just nothing like it in the whole country. It's complete with fireworks and uh, hundreds of motorcycles, show cars, gentlemen car club here. Uh, big, big supporters <coughs> of all things. Yeah, on, on that note, you mentioned how the students will put those videos together. And there have been a few times we've kind of, I guess, spied on you guys. We've had the live camera in the, in the, in the motorcade. And to, to really just sit back for Andy and myself and listen to those conversations, it's, it's moving. So you, you get the best part of it to be there and oh, actually see it all happen. You're right. Uh, we, instruct, we instruct the assistants to start the conversation. But once that conversation starts, just be the fly on the wall because it goes. And when we get to that Air Force Museum, you know, it's like they've been, it's a band of brothers and sisters. And it sparks memories and stories that they start sharing. And they're not pulling each other's legs. These are bona fide heroes that travel on these. And, you know, the spouses will tell us their stories. But they, they've never heard of them. They didn't know anything about this. A lot of these people, they tuck it away in Vietnam. They're the same way. They, they tuck those memories away. They're, they're very painful. And uh, I'd love to have you watch our video because um, there's some very, very good stories there. Um, and, and it's powerful, but it's good to cry. Crying's a good thing. And uh, don't ever think it's not. It's a good thing. So, all right. Thank you all. God bless. Thank you very much. That's all I have here. Thank you, Laura. Uh, next, we have Warren's uh, trustee, uh, Snodgrass. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to present Warren's <coughs> in the amount of $716,796.03. These were reviewed and recommended for approval earlier this evening at the ANF committee meeting, and I move for their passage. Second. I have a motion and a second. Are there any discussions? I see none. Would the clerk take a roll call? Trustee Snodgrass. Aye. Tammy. Aye. Kidd. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Yo. Aye. Beck is absent. Five ayes and one absent. Thank you. Lori, the warrants are approved. Next, we have administrative reports. I'd just like to say thank you to the public works and the road crews uh, in our winter storm here. I thought everybody did an excellent job. We appreciate that. Uh, next, we have Attorney Green. No report, please. Next, we have Harlem High School student liaison, Justin Porter. Thank you, Your Honor. The activities for this week include a home girls basketball game on the 6th at 7 p.m. and then an away basketball game for the boys uh, at Gilbert on the 6th at 7 p.m. And next week, there is a girls basketball game at East on the 13th at 7 p.m. and a home boys basketball game uh, against East on the 13th also at 7 p.m. Thank you, Justin. Next, uh, we have Public Works Superintendent Chad Hunter. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to thank our Public Works employees and contractors uh, for all their hard work this weekend. It was a long weekend and uh, they worked hard. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Next, we have Public Safety Supervisor Sergeant Doug Bushman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, for the time period of January 16th through January 29th, there were 816 calls for service in the village. We had 227 police reports taken and 288 arrests. 
I'd also like to mention that this past Saturday, uh, BFW Post 9759 had their annual Officer of the Year Awards banquet, and the uh, Village of Machesney Park uh, had Deputy Luke Wagner receive that honor. He was recognized by the Sheriff's Department for uh, 40 DUI arrests this past year, plus uh, he saved four lives with the use of Narcan, which is for uh, heroin overdoses. That's all I have. Thank you, Sergeant Bushman. Uh, next, we have committee and trustee reports. Do we have any reports this evening? Trustee Kidd. The Planning and Economic Development Committee is looking forward to 04R15 to the February 17th board meeting with a positive recommendation. Also, uh, address 238 Sharper Drive. Um, trustees look at as maybe an alternative building for the uh, maintenance crew. It's listed for under three hundred thousand dollars, and also we put the uh, mulch pile and the sand pit. There's enough acreage over there for both. Um, also, I've uh, requested with Tim to have a tour of the J.C. Penney store, and uh, Nick Permilia with Advanced Appraisal will be going with me. And if any trustee would like to see the inside with an appraiser, let me know. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Trustee Kidd. Are, are there any more reports? I see none. <clears throat> the next item for consideration is the consent agenda. Are there any items that a trustee would like removed from the consent agenda to be considered separately? I see none. The consent agenda is, is, is accepted as it is. I will entertain a motion to approve all items under the consent agenda. I have a motion and a second. Could I have staff report, please? Thank you, Your Honor. Item A is resolution 02R15. It's a resolution <coughs> to bid uh, road projects that include the following Leland Avenue Water System, Leland Avenue Trunk Sewer System, Pershing Avenue, Gilbert Terrace, Wilshire Drive, Liberty Boulevard, Marquette Road. Reconstruction improvements for all those roads. Um, and that is to um, authorize the engineer to uh, bid those projects. Item B is resolution 5R15. This is a resolution to release closed session minutes from July 15th of 2013. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Are, are there any trustee discussions? I see none. Uh, will the clerk take roll call? Trustee Tannen. Aye. Kidd. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Yo. Aye. Snodgrass. Aye. Mayor Poland. Aye. Six <coughs> ayes, no nays, and one absent. The consent agenda is approved. <coughs> uh, next, we have public comment. Do we have anyone who wishes to make a public comment? I see none. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So made. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned.